getting more from your cheap computer microphones. Here's a microphone that I had, but the audio quality reproduced was very poor. Now they use an electret insert, and they should be quite good. However, this one wasn't. I opened it up, destroying the plastic grill in the process, and I found a few things wrong. First of all, the microphone element was not even glued in position. It wasn't facing the front, and that would have muffled the sound. The other thing was when I touched the neck of the microphone and along the cable, there is 50 hertz hum. I opened that up and found there are just two wires. They weren't even shielded. And the audio level wasn't good enough. I'll talk about that later on. Here's the wire from the original microphone lead. Just two leads and no shielding. No wonder there is so much hum. Replacing the twin lead with shielded audio cable made a huge difference and meant you could touch it without harm. Having broken the microphone grill, I needed to make a substitute. In this case, the nib part of a highlighter pen. When experimenting with microphones, don't overlook the settings in the computer. This one, for instance, has a recording volume and also a preset microphone boost, where you can add 10, 20 or 30 dB to the audio. But note that turning up the volume may increase the output level, but not necessarily the output quality. There may be internally generated noise from the microphone, and some other measures are required to fix that. Electric microphones contain a FET preamp, which require a small voltage to drive it. In my computer, I measured less than a volt. A way to overcome that is to use an external power supply, even if it's only a 9 volt battery. I'm looking now at the website for Elliott Sound Products. There's a circuit under the article entitled Recording and Measurement Microphones for a remote powered electric measurement mic. It's two resistors, a capacitor and a 9 volt battery. The circuit was intended to do various measurements and comparisons on electric inserts. However, it also provides good results when using an electric microphone with a computer. One thing to be aware of is you don't want DC from the 9 volt battery going into the computer and to avoid that you use a capacitor to provide isolation. In this case 100 microfarads, though I suspect a lower value would be okay as well. If that's not good enough then you need a proper microphone preamp. Again, the Elliott Sound Products website has many articles and circuits on all aspects of audio, including a section on microphone preamps. I'll include a link in the text under this video. One problem with microphones are pops on certain sounds. You can overcome that by putting wool over the element. You can use something like a beanie, sock or tea cosy to deaden the sound, but beware too much wool can deaden the sound too much and cut out some of the highs that you need for readability. The mods are simple, cheap and easy, so why not look inside your microphone and see what improvements you can make.